watching online on Facebook uh, with Angus Kennedy of Nature Northwest. Angus, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, John. Happy Christmas. And a happy Christmas to you and yours. Now, this time of the year, one of the uh, one of the things I suppose that's um, synonymous with Christmas is pines and uh, pine cones, and they they come from obviously from pine trees. But um, uh, interesting to note that there's there's only the, the only the only native there's only one strand of native pine tree because all the rest were wiped out. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, you're you, uh, 100%. Yeah. And evergreen, I suppose evergreen plants back in ancient times um, it always held a bit of a mystery um, to people. Why is it that so many plants drop their leaves and seem to shut down for winter? Um, and then some of them just kept going, like the ivy or the holly or the or the, the pine tree, the conifer trees in general, all the conifer trees. And in fact, um, uh, they're associated, a lot of the different evergreen plants are associated with all sorts of festivities that happened forever. Um, at this time of year. This morning, I was watching the live stream um, on the Heritage Ireland website of the Solstice. Um, the Solstice coming into Newgrange, and it was very cloudy. So they, they, I don't think they were able to see a huge amount. But it's the, I think tonight's the, the longest night, and today, tomorrow kind of thing are the shortest days. And then the hour, or the, the, uh, the, the minutes start to add on again, our days start to build and build. But of course, Back in the ancient times, incredibly dark time, incredibly worrying time for them. So they, they treasured their um, their evergreen trees. And any tree that's a conifer is a cone-bearing tree, and most of them are evergreen. And there's a few exceptions, uh, the larch being one, that famous um, that famous um, uh, Celtic cross that is planted in the woodlands when you're on, on the way out to Derry. Um, that's all larch, and it changes colour, which makes it jump out. But usually conifer trees are evergreen. Most of them are evergreen. The likes of fir trees, which are your typical Christmas tree now. Most of us, if we have a real Christmas tree in the house, it's probably a fir tree, but it's not native. Uh, our only native conifers are juniper, yew trees, uh, and then the big Scots pine. Okay. And people might think when they hear Scots pine, well, that's not a native tree, but it, uh, but well, one strand of it is native to Ireland. Yeah, it is indeed. And, and Scots pine have been in Ireland for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and they like, uh, they can tolerate a certain amount of wet, not too wet, but they don't need very new uh, nutrient rich soil. So they will grow up the mountains, they'll grow in the kind of rougher places on the west and the north and so on. Um, and uh, and they would have covered our mountains in places where um, where oak wouldn't have been able to do so well. The likes of birch, there would have been bits of willow, maybe bits of hazel, and Scots pine would have been there as well. And they still have some of those big Scots pine forests in Scotland, but we have managed um, uh, to to wipe all them out. Of course, we've only about two percent, little less than two percent of native woodland in Ireland anymore. That, and what I mean by that is. Uh, over 90% of all of Ireland was covered in some kind of forest at one stage, and now that's less than 2% is the native trees uh, that are there. But Scots pine, um, we knew that uh, it was growing here because it's preserved in the bog, um, and they thought it was completely wiped out from the landscape in Ireland um, about one and a half thousand years ago. But recently, only about three or four years ago, they discovered a little stand on a private estate uh, in the Burren, uh, a limestone area that probably, because of its estate, it was protected in more recent times, and it probably wouldn't have been farmed much anyway back in the day because of the limestone. Um, and they discovered that the Scots pine there is genetically the exact same as the Scots pine that they dig out of the bog that might be one, two, three, four thousand years old. Ah, okay, so the, so that's how they were able to make the connection, and yeah. it's easy, easy enough easy enough to spot because um, because there's no lower branches for some reason. No lower branches. They're they're an amazing tree. Uh, the way they adapt. So as they mature and they get older, when they're younger, they've lots of lower branches. But as they mature and get older, um, you get this big kind of nearly cathedral effect. These beautiful, very very tall, straight. Um, trunks but they shed their lower branches unlike say the likes of sitka spruce you go into one of those big plantations the conifer plantations they're quite often sitka spruce very fast growing as um as well but they will keep their lower branches but the lower branches will die because the the, the top branches the canopy branches chop off all the light and they stop any light coming down into the forest whereas the scots pine it's adapted to know that so it sheds its lower branches it doesn't need them anymore and that means an awful lot less windage so it's able to tolerate the storms a little bit better because of course they're often growing in the kind of places that they grow the kind of places that they do well uh, it's often very thin soils and um, so the roots are, aren't able to go very deep so uh, they need to be able to shed those branches so they don't tumble over in the storms 
Uh, two things that we, we I would associate with uh, pine trees would be uh, the the cones, and the, there's a very distinctive cone on the Scots pine, and also the 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 needles. And I think there's there when it comes to the Scots pine, they're little pears. Yeah, little pears. So all the so there's about six hundred different conifers, and about half of those are pines. And all the pines have those kind of slightly longer needles. Most of the species are in pairs. And the Scots pines, yeah, they'll be as long as your little finger or sometimes longer again. So you can identify them quite quickly by looking at the pines on the ground. Because, of course, all evergreen trees, they still shed about a third of their leaves every year. But then they grow a little bit more than a third and keep growing that way. Whereas the likes of the fir tree that might be in your, your living room or your, your wherever you have your Christmas tree right now, um, they have the much shorter and softer needles. Uh, and then the Sitka spruce trees, which aren't used as Christmas trees because they dry out too quickly. They'll drop their, their needles too quickly. They're very spiky. If you grab them, it will be sore because yeah. um, they're, they're tough and spiky. Whereas the Scots pine, they're long, uh, which gives it a little bit more elegance as well. And also that bark that you, the, those trunks you referred to, they have a beautiful orangey color. And then the leaves themselves, when you get a little bit of sun on them, they have a kind of bluish tinge. So when you look at Scots pine from any bit of distance, high up in the tree and mature trees you'll see beautiful orange especially if it's catching a bit of sunlight mm -hmm. uh, and then that kind of metallic -y blue tinge and um, to the needles very graceful things they're a yeah, very majestic tree the the scotch pine and as you mentioned earlier glen Vey national park a great place to 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 see them and there's a there's a new booklet out in glen Vey. There is Glen, Glen Vey, of course. Uh, it's a, it's our own national park up here, and we should be so proud of it. And they do they do an awful lot of preservation work when it comes to nature, uh, of all sorts of different nature and habitats. They've cleared one area specifically to um, to propagate that native species of Scots pine we mentioned, because seeds are being collected from that tiny little stand in Connemara, and places like Glen Vey now are going to start propagating, start growing that tree. So in time to come, my children will be able to go and get saplings from them, which will be the pure genetic one. They won't be mixed with any others. But there's um, uh, Sean O'Guihan, um, the head gardener there, uh, has an amazing knowledge of of all sorts of things, wild and naturey, uh, and of course gardens as well. But he takes great interest in a lot of the native plants that are there, and he produced this lovely little booklet. I got my hands on one there a while ago, um, and you can pick them up, I believe, in the visitor center in Glen Vey. Um, the ancient woodlands at Lenvey, and it, it's got a map in it, and it maps out all of the different little patches of woodland. Some you can see, some you don't know are there at all, and tells you a bit about the history, the species that are there. Uh, and it's fascinating because each one, it's very, um, it's very accessibly written, uh, and each one gives you a little snapshot into what all of Ireland used to look like, uh, and the different types of trees, be it low in the valley, be it high up in the mountains, or, or wherever it is. So well worth looking out for. Yeah, absolutely. I would uh, pass a, a, a great day for the family, maybe uh, over the course of the holidays. And um, uh, something else has uh, been produced recently, and uh, you have an involvement in this, and that is a, a video produced by a pupil out of school, Wara in Remelton, and it's all about the Lennon. It's Lennon. all about the Lennon, and it, funny, it ties into Scots Pines. It ties into, you think of the lovely holly trees that people are looking out for and all the rest of it. This is the very type of thing these students were, were doing. It was funded by the Local Authority Water Programme uh, and the Donegal branch of on, uh, of Antashka. They went and applied for this funding, and then I went and, um, uh, and did a three-day project with the school. We spent a day learning in the school and then a day exploring the Lennon at three different sites from high in the mountains to halfway down past Garden Lake to uh, just downstream of Kilmacrenan. And they tested the water quality and they, they looked at the amount of vegetation on the side and they looked at the amount of bugs in the vegetation that they could find at each site. And then the third day was their findings and the rest. And we made a little movie of it. Charlie Joe Doherty, the talented filmmaker, made a, a gorgeous little movie. Um, and it's uh, it, it's an interesting thing. It's a new departure for, for all of us really of filming uh, children. Um, young people but they, they were fantastic and what's different to this nature movie to other ones that I've done before um, it's not my voice or anybody else's voice or any of the colleagues that were working with me it's all it's narrated by the students and they explore from the beginning right down the Lennon there's some beautiful footage of the Lennon going all the way down and then they explore why the Lennon is good as a nature corridor and crucially how it could be improved by all of us um, so it's a, it's a lovely thing the whole idea was for young people to engage the community to engage with the river um, but by goodness, they took it and they ran with it. You know, it was, uh, it's impressive. Now, absolutely. And gives us an insight to into one of the most important rivers in the county and uh, and how how healthy it is and what it means to the the environment and uh, that, that nature corridor. 
Yeah, completely. And, and we saw, and the students were able to figure out for themselves very much, the more trees, the more riverside habitat that there is. Uh, of, also, it, it helps with the flooding and holding the riverbanks together and filtering the water for anything that might be coming down. But also it acts as a corridor, as a nature corridor, because we need to have our uh, our more productive land and we need to have our built land and our towns, etc. But, um, but if we planted up more areas and if we fill the gaps that are there we'd have a pure nature corridor for the squirrel or the bird or the the, the parrot on the run from bally buffet or whoever it is to go all the way from the mountains right down through trenta and um, through kilmacran and through remelton and then on to loxwilly and of course all of our rivers have the potential to act as nature corridors like that if we look after the um uh, we look after the voices. But if you listen to the, the children talking about it, it's very compelling uh, and they just get straight mm. to the, the nub of the issues, which is great. Well, well, let's hope that part hasn't made it over as far as the Lennon. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, finally, Angus, uh, you know, seeing as we're, we're uh, almost at Christmas, there's a question about holly and uh, people go to, you know, this is the one time of the year when people take, take note of holly. And also the berries, and someone says we have holly near our house, but there's not many berries. How come? Are they unlucky? Is this a good year for berries? Or, or yeah, what? it's it's very interesting. People we, and we've often talked before um, about how our berries a sign of the winter to come, uh, and it's really more they're a sign of of the spring or the summer past. And holly um, flowers come out a little bit later than say the likes of hawthorn or certainly blackthorn. Um, and late in spring and summer, our weather was very good. Uh, so the flowers didn't get blown off and the pollinating insects had a good warm chance to pollinate them. So quite a few of our holly trees are actually doing pretty well this year. However, what can throw people about holly is that there's male and female trees. A lot of trees have both male and female parts, and um, but the holly trees, they're separate. And if it's a male tree, it'll have those little white flowers in spring, but it won't have the berries. Um, and uh, that it's producing the pollen with them. And then the female trees, they're the ones that will have the little round berries. So bear that in mind. If you're out looking for holly, if you're out looking for berries, first of all, they're hugely important as a source of food for the birds. Um, and second as well, it, only half of the trees out there are able to produce berries in the first place. And, and holly ran into trouble outside of protected place like our, like our nature reserves in recent years because people were so enthusiastically collecting um the, the red berries, no, they, they were doing any wrong. They, they, they thought there's a lovely thing, which it is. However, uh, if you do go and you have something growing in your own place, make sure you leave some for the birds and some just generally for nature, because those birds will spread the seeds then the, the following year. All right. OK, then, Angus, uh, um, informative as always. And uh, you have a great Christmas and and uh, no doubt we'll be chatting to you in, in the new year. Thanks a million. Brilliant. Thanks, John. You'll find those videos, by the way, uh, that, that oh, yeah. video of the, of the Lennon on naturenorthwest.ie. There's a video page there now of all of that. Um, and and also the video that I looked about Scott's Pines that uh, featured you in it. Where's, where, where can that be seen? That, that's on the same as well, naturenorthwest.ie. And there's the whole page, uh, that nature video page. There's a series of six short videos, each one five or six minutes long, um, uh, on a different type of native tree. And they were all produced a bit earlier the, earlier this year as well. And I've got to say that the footage, it's easy for me. I, I can talk and I like to talk. Um, but uh, Charlie Joe Doherty and then some of his colleagues that have added some drone footage into it, their work at editing and bringing these together um, makes them very lovely pieces, yeah, I think. Yeah, they look great. OK, Angus, thank you. Take care. Happy um, Christmas. Happy Christmas and see you in the new year. Your mental health is important. And now it's easier than ever to find the supports and services.